Kicks Honey Six, you know that one. That's Johnny Cash. Full some prison blues. Interesting uh, bit. That song recorded at Sun Studios in uh, Memphis, uh, July 30th, 1955. It was on his debut album, Johnny Cash and His Hot Blue Guitar, 1957. Sam Phillips, of course, did produce that. Interesting uh, bit of trivia. In 1968, that song was actually pulled from radio stations following the June 5th assassination of Ro- uh, Senator Robert Kennedy because of the lyrics, by, uh, but I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die, were considered too offensive after the senator's shooting death. So it's interesting how, you know, the more things change, the way the other say the more things stay the same well i mentioned earlier that i've got uh, a visitor i've got a um a, an interview with uh, the son of sun records founder and uh, founder of bigger broadcasting one of the most famous men ever to be born right here in florence alabama father of rock and roll who literally changed music forever please welcome jerry phillips jerry how are you boss Man, I couldn't be better Fletch unless I had more money. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how that works, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it works pretty good. But you know, talking about that post and prison song, there was a lot of stuff that Sam recorded that was not popular at certain times, like Great Balls of Fire and a whole lot of shaking going on, and songs like that that were banned from radio for a little while because of a content which seemed to be too little bit out there. You know what I mean? Well, that's one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk to you about because Jerry, you being the son of Sam Phillips, you grew up uh, it, with literally with Elvis Presley. You grew up with Johnny Cash and Roy Orbison and Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, you guys were you were friends with these guys, like literally close family friends with these guys, and you grew up on their stories and uh, and for a large a large part of their their careers, the, the highlight of their careers um, in their heyday, and of course being the son of Sam Phillips. Uh, who is considered the father of rock and roll, and you got a, you got the unique perspective of knowing the real man, not the man that history talks about, but the man, the human being. So let me ask you from the perspective of a son, um, what kind of man was Sam Phillips? Well, first, that's a kind of a uh, many-answered question. There's many answers to that question. He was a really driven person. He was a really passionate person. Um, you know, he uh, he liked vodka and he liked women. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, uh, you know, he was just really a, he was a fair man as a father and uh, very open-minded. And, um, you know, I know when... Uh, but when Elvis used to come by our house, you know, late at night, he couldn't get out. You know, Elvis couldn't get out till after dark, you know, usually about 10 or 11 o'clock at night because he would get kind of mobbed anywhere he went. And, you know, my mother and father would, would wake us up, and when Elvis would call and say, hey, I'm going to stop by the house tonight, they'd wake us up and let us stay up and be with everybody all night long. And, you know, that was quite a open-minded uh, way to raise your kids. And uh, But we, you know... We had, we had learned a lot more from life through, through those experiences. And I'll tell you something funny. Elvis brought the best-looking ladies to my house I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. And, and uh, it was really uh, it was really funny how, uh, uh, as I got older, and in my, ni- in my teens and 20s, uh, Elvis would throw, he'd have, he'd rent a movie theater, show movies all night long. And um, you could, I could ask any girl anywhere, if they want to go sit and watch movies with Elvis Presley all night long, and unless they were going to have a baby or getting surgery the next morning, they, they would come. You know what I mean? And so uh, it was easy to get a date. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, on this the uh, the anniversary of his birth, nineteen twenty three, right here in uh, Florence, Alabama, January fifth, uh, Sam Phillips uh, left Florence, moved to Memphis, uh, and made his name in uh, obviously. Um, record production but he he also loved the industry of radio and broadcasting tell us a little bit about his roots and his history with the broadcast medium and radio well you know he uh, he radio was always his first love after he got into it he got you know his his uh brother-in-law jimmy Connolly, was in radio and in, in the shows area there and he, he heard sam introduce uh, the the high school band at uh, some kind of concert at at uh, Coffee High School. He said, "Man, you ought to you ought to you ought to try to get the radio." So he hired him, put him on the air, and he fell in love with radio because he always said that radio took him away. You know, it was it was the theater of the mind, and uh, it took him away. So 
he started out there in, in the Shoals area, and he uh, moved to Decatur, went to radio there, then went to Nashville. You know, as you well know how you do in radio, you can kind of step up from market to market. And after he got to Nashville, he went to Memphis to work at WRAC, and uh, it was in the Hotel Peabody. And then uh, he started mixing the big bands that were coming through the Peabody at the Peabody Skyway, and, and he would, you know, feed that to the networks, and it would be a live broadcast. And so he fell in love with the radio, and then uh, as a side deal to make some more money, he opened up his studio because he wanted to... Uh, you know, give people a chance in that particular time. It was black people that he was uh, wanting to give an opportunity to because he was raised on a cotton farm and he saw the, you know, the uh, the, the disadvantage that uh, blacks had at that particular time, 1950, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. And so he was he really wanted to give the underdog a chance to be heard. And so that's that's what he did. And uh, you know, he cut some great blues records, and he never wanted his own label, really, but he would cut those blues records like on Howlin' Wolf and Little Junior Parker and Ike Turner and all those guys, and he would lease it to another record company like Chess or Modern, and then they would put it out. He didn't want to have anything to do with the business side of things then, but they didn't pay him correctly a lot of the time, so he was forced to uh, start his own label. And he named it Sun because he it was like a new beginning. Every day is a new beginning when the sun comes up, and you got a chance to make whatever you want to make out of yourself. Well, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about Sam, and as I've as I've gone through our catalog of Sun Records and and learned little bits of trivia here and there, I found that Sam had a couple of songwriting credits to his name, and it never once occurred to me in all the years that I've known the Phillips family whether or not Sam was himself. And I know that you, you yourself, are a musician. You play uh, guitar. You sing. You write songs. Was Sam Phillips also a songwriter at at any level? Well, it, it, yeah, it, he wasn't a sit down. I'm gonna write a song, guy. You know, like like we do today. But like he'd have some people in the studio, and he might not like one of the verses that's in it, or change of several several words or whatever. And, and he would be become a writer on that song, you know, which was totally fair and up, up and up. Or anything wrong with that? In fact, he would probably make the song better than it was by adding whatever he suggested because he was. He was really trying to be successful and get you know get some good stuff, get the best stuff he could get out of everybody he was working on. And if he thought a couple of words needed to be replaced or, or you know, a verse needed to be added that he might have thought up, he, he there are some songs that he, he has credit on, like Mystery Train is one of them, and there's several other Roy Orbison songs that he's got a songwriter credit on. But as a songwriter, straight up songwriter, no, he wasn't. But uh, he he could have been if he if, he, if that's what he wanted to. Put his mind to. I bet he'd have been a great one because he's uh, he was a very driven person. Whatever he was doing, he did it a hundred percent. You want him on your team if uh, if you were, whatever you were doing, you know, playing football or doing music or radio or whatever. You want him on your team because he's gonna he would outwork you, outthink you. But you know, hey, thinking about him, I, I know you got another question for me probably, but you know, I, it's hard for me to believe that you know he would be a hundred years old today. That's that kind of makes me feel like I'm getting old, you know, to have a hundred year old father, you know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it would be interesting to see what he would be doing if he was healthy and a hundred years old, just like the same with Elvis. If Elvis was healthy and was a hundred years old, I guarantee you they'd be doing something very unusual and very visionary. I agree, absolutely. I, I did know uh, Sam briefly. We lost him July 30th of 2003, and I knew him for about five or six years before he passed. Uh, one of the most interesting men I've ever known, easily. One of the, you, couldn't, you couldn't know not know that he was in the room. That's for absolute certain. There's no question that, like I said earlier, uh, the man literally changed music forever. He's one of the most famous uh, natives of Florence, Alabama. Uh, he, along with like W.C. Handy and, of course, uh, uh, Rick Hall of Fame Studios, who Sam influenced Rick Hall. And uh, was, it was Rick had a tremendous ins- uh, admiration for Sam. But you were his son. And... With a legacy like, you know, the father of rock and roll, countless documentaries and coming at music history from every direction, I wanted to ask you one before I turn you loose and get back to, you know, the celebration of Sun Records music um, that he was responsible for. Is there anything that you, any little bit of minutia about your dad that maybe the average person might not have learned about him in a documentary or 
in any kind of music retrospective. Was there anything about Sam that stood out to you as his son that you think uh, that's interesting and folks should know that? Well, I know that he liked his own company a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that might not be what kind of answer you want to your question, but, you know, he, um, you know, he never got real close to a lot of his artists or anything like that because, you know, I mean, he was close to them and, and associated with them. And him and Elvis were probably the two of the closest of any of them at all. But uh, he just kept his distance, um, you know, because he was a businessman and he had to, he had to, he couldn't become one of the boys. Uh, but, you know, he, he just, uh, he just went for it, man. I mean, I, I don't know if you could get that out of a documentary or not, but I mean, you know, he, he was working 18 to 20 hours a day, uh, at the radio station and the, and the studio combined. And, um, he, uh, had to give one of them up. And, you know, most people would think he would give up the one that was making money. I mean, not give up the one that was making money and give up the one that wasn't making money. And, but he gave up his paying job at the radio station, really rolled the dice, gambled on uh, his studio. And so I don't know if that answers your question or not, but he, you know, he was a such, so, there were so many angles to him, it's hard to pin him down into any one category or, or any. I mean, he had a lot of unusual things that a lot of people wouldn't know about, you know. But I wanted to say, Fletch, that not only is it his 100th birthday, it's 60. Three years for Sam Phillips Recording Studio in Memphis, and 71 years for Sun Record Company, and this is our 50th year for Big River Broadcasting. So that's a lot of that's a lot of years. That's you know? a lot of milestones, yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's all kind of come together, you know, all at the same time here. Well, before I let you go, one last question, boss. Uh, I've heard it said numerous times over the years that Sam's favorite artist to record uh, when he was working was Howlin' Wolf. And that's understandable. Howlin' Wolf, I love the blues myself. Who would you say would be your favorite Sun Records artist that your father ever recorded? Well, again, that's a hard question. Of course, I love Howlin' Wolf, too. I'd say if I had to boil it down to one person, it would be Howlin' Wolf and maybe Elvis Presley, though. Know? But then there's Jerry Lee Lewis. And then there's Charlie Rich, and then all of those guys, you know, had their own thing going. Nobody sounded like anybody else. And I don't really have – I mean, Sam's statement was that if he, if he could work with any two people he ever worked with more, it would have been Howlin' Wolf and Charlie Rich. But he never got to fully record them like he wanted to. But, yeah, I mean, that Howlin' Wolf was – he thought it was the most unusual voice he'd ever heard. And then Charlie Rich was the, you know, was the same type of guy in a completely opposite direction. So there was a lot of space there. But for me, I don't think I would die. I and mean, of course, Elvis would be one of my favorite all time, you know, all time. And then, like I said, then there's Jerry Lee Lewis. And wow, there were so many people that, that they had their own unique style. It'd be, it, it, I hate to be so not answering your question, <laughs> but that's, uh, there's so many, there's so many great records that were recorded. Uh, that changed the world of music that's hard to pin me down to one of them you know absolutely and uh, i totally understand it my favorite my personal favorites were always johnny cash and charlie rich myself but uh you know what yep. there, there were so many amazing artists on the sun records label jerry phillips uh who is uh, the current owner uh, and operator of big river broadcasting here in its 50th year founded by sam phillips jerry's father who's the father of rock and roll and one of the most famous men ever to be born right here in Florence, Alabama, January 5th, 1923. Uh, Jerry Boss, thank you so much for calling in to talk to us and sharing uh, these stories about your your dad with our audience, okay? Well, you're welcome, man. And I want to thank the audience that are listening, the audience that have been listening to us for 50 years for being these supporters of our radio stations. And we try to you know, do, do a service to our community. Sam always loved Florence, Alabama, and he never, he never not, did not mention that. In any every interview, you always mention where he's from in some town. So, yeah, hello to everybody, and thank you for listening. Absolutely. We're, we're going to continue with our celebration of Sam Phillips' 100th birthday. I've got one of my personal, if not my personal favorite, by Charlie Rich on the way in just a bit. Tim Duggar's got new music and Mitchell Tenpenny's Truth About You next on Kicks 96. Finding great.